Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another soccer video. So in this video, I asked the question, what is going on with OL Rain? Like, Rain, are you guys, are you guys okay? You have three wins, one draw, and six losses with a negative five goal differential. Um, you guys are number nine in the NWSL season with 10 points as of filming this video. On the bright side, you're doing way better than Kansas City with no wins, three draws, and seven losses with a ten, negative 10 goal differential. And just three points so far in the NWSL season. I mean, I would ask if Kansas City is okay, but at, at this point, we all know they're not. <laughs> um, yeah, so Kansas City not looking too good right now, but... When it comes to OL Reign and the squad that they have, it's amazing and surprising that Reign FC is ranked 9 in the season, just above Kansas City, who is ranked number 10. I have to ask if Reign FC is okay because honestly, what's going on with this team or what's going on with this club? This team is made up of so many great and talented footballers, it's shocking that they are not in the top three or the top five of this NWSL season. Looking at the roster of OL Reign, there are just so many recognizable names. Of course, we have Megan, Megan Pino and Rose Lovell, but Sarah Buhadi, Shirley Cruz, Jessica Fishlock, Sophia Herta, uh, Eugene Le Sommer, Quinn, and Maro Jean who I actually have a jersey of. This was back when she was playing in the World Cup with Germany. I actually forgot I had that. <laughs> anyway, yeah, these are very talented players. And the thing is, this team has more. There's so much talent on this team, but I can't help but wonder, how is this team so far down in the league? Stats-wise, this team can maintain possession pretty well, and they had a lot of shots on goal. I like many I like many would expect this team to do so much better with all this talent and and well Maro. <laughs> uh there seems to be some good news though, and that is Laura Harvey, who coached Seattle Rain from 2013 to 2017, is returning in August to manage OL Rain. This is coming after Fareed Ben Stiddy. I'm just going to call him Fareed because we all know I'm bad with last names. Um, yeah, this is coming after Fareed, the former manager of OL Reign, decided to resign on July 2nd. I'll get back to Laura Harvey in a bit, but I want to talk about Fareed. Fareed was hired in 2020 to manage and coach OL Reign, but had resigned from Reign FC, but had resigned before Reign FC would take on the Houston Dash, where Rain would lose 2-0. This loss came after a 3-0 loss to Gotham FC. It's clear that something was going on with this team. Why were they losing? Why is the talent on this team not being utilized? Why did Fareed decide to resign? It's unknown or unclear why he would resign, and I even typed in Google, why did Fareed Benstiti resigned from OL Reign. And even though I couldn't find an answer, I did find something else about Fareed that led me down a rabbit hole that I didn't expect to go down. So, to women's soccer fans and NWSL fans, this is going to be some old news. Um, yeah, this is going to be some old news. You may have already heard this before. But apparently, U.S. Women's National Team player Lindsay Haran had some something to say about Fareed Ben City when she played for PSG. All right. So when Lindsay Haran was 18, she went over to play for PSG. Um, if you hear if you hear any noise or thunder, it's raining and there are people working outside. Yeah, make it make ex make it make sense. <laughs> but anyway, Lindsay Haran was 18 when she went over to play for PSG, and it was there she would meet 
um, for Reed Bensteady and holy crap. Lindsay Horan was body shamed by Fareed and PSG staff for her weights. Like the stuff that she went through was horrendous and the things that were said to her were insulting, disgusting, and demeaning. In an interview, Lindsay Horan even said it made her want to quit soccer. And thankfully that didn't happen. Lindsay says in an interview what happened when she played for PSG. And I'm going to read some of the things. Like I found multiple articles where she where she did talk about it. But yeah, these are some of the key points that I found. Or these are just key points from one of the articles that I was using to make this video. Lindsay Haran said an assistant coach uh, literally literally slaps <laughs> An assistant coach literally slapping a snack out of her hand and grabbing the side of her waist. Yeah, I already hate this because I've had family members do that to me in the past, like grab and squeeze my waist. And it doesn't matter who it, who does it. It's still gross and, and, an, and an invasion of someone's personal space. Uh, Lindsay Horan goes on to say that coaching staff would announce to the team that she and several other other players, uh, she and several other players were on diets. Uh, there was fining players for having desserts and double fining the players on diets. After excelling at preseason fitness test testing, the coach told Haran in front of the team that she still weighed too much. Having zero energy as a result of reducing her food consumption to unhealthy levels in an effort to lose weight. Witnessing a coach tell a player who started wearing makeup that that was what got her finally called up to the French national team or to France's nat national team. At her lowest body fat percentage, being told by coaching staff she was beautiful now. And that they could see, and that they couldn't see fat on her waist through her shirt, and she could fit into certain clothes. I mean, wow, God, what was the obsession with her weight or a player's weight? What is the obsession with appearance? Players are there to play football. There is so much wrong with this, but reducing your food consumption to the point where you have no energy is so dangerous, especially as a professional athlete. Your body needs energy, your body needs food to function and do the exercises and routines, especially when you're an athlete. So Lindsay knew she was unhealthy after losing so much weight, but the coaching staff at PSG loved it. They said she was beautiful now. Air quotes around that. <laughs> like, my God, I can go on forever, and but maybe for another video. Anyway, another incident Haran mentioned was that when she was on a bus, one of her teammates opened up a chocolate bar and coach, either Fareed or one of the coaching staff, came back there, took the chocolate bar, told and told her teammate that she couldn't have it around Lindsay. Like, what? Oh, because they think it will tempt, li tempt Lindsay. Is that what they were going with? I mean, at that point, Lindsay probably needs a chocolate bar. Hell, she deserves all the chocolate bars. Maybe even a hug. Again, she was 18. I know what that's like. I was body shamed and bullied for my weight at 19 by a wannabe Marine. And it took me years to get over that. When it comes to Lindsay, she says this is still a sensitive subject and topic for her, which is very understandable. I mean, I let words from a wannabe Marine get to me. <laughs> Anyway, Lindsay said Fareed approached her during the Challenge Cup and said he forgave her for discussing his and PSG's treatment of her. He said to her, Lindsay, I forgive you for all the comments you made about me on social media. I'm sorry, is this soccer? Like, is this soccer or another episode of everyone's favorite TV show, The Lion, the Witch, and the Audacity of this Bitch? Like, how full of yourself can you be? How arrogant can you be? Lindsay then says to him, I didn't apologize, and what I said was my honest thoughts, and what you did to me really affected me. 
Like, this is so disturbing to me. And honestly, Lindsay Haran isn't even my favorite player. But I feel the need to defend her because a lot of the criticism she gets, especially during the summer series, is so unfair. What she went through at PSG and what for Reed and the coaching staff put her through was unfair. And she never got an apology because for Reed doesn't think what he did or said was wrong. I want to end this whole thing about Lindsay Haran and Farid by saying Lindsay Haran is a beautiful, amazing, and talented soccer player who rightfully deserves to be on the U.S. Women's National Team. And my next soccer jersey or scarf is going to have her name on it. <laughs> that being said, the reason why I brought this all up, the reason why I'm talking about what happened between Lindsay Haran and Farid in great detail is because this was the same guy who was coaching Rain FC. The guy who body shamed Lindsay Haran is the same guy who was coaching OL Rain. From what I found when NWSLs, when NWSL fans and Rain fans learned for Reed was going to be managing OL Rain, a lot of them weren't happy, especially when Lindsay Haran talked about what she went through at PSG. Since Farid resigned from OL Reign, I can't help but wonder if this guy was treating some of the players on OL Reign the same, re the same way he was treating Lindsay or her former teammates on PSG. Signaling, singling out players, embarrassing players in front of the whole team, criticizing their weight, insulting them, telling them to diet and reduce their food consumption, etc. Stuff like this will lower team and player morale. And if they're reducing their food consumption to a point where they have no energy, of course the team slash player slash players are not going to have the energy to play. I want to point out that this is all just me speculating and making assumptions from past events. According to what others have said, many players on OL Reign liked him, which would throw, I mean, most of what I was speculating out the door or out the window. But since we have no idea what was going on, I mean, still, we have no idea what was going on at practices. Some players could have really liked him, but others not so much. Again, we don't know why Fareed decided to resign. It's possible he could have gotten a better managing, managing opportunity someplace else, but the fact that he didn't finish out this season with, with OL Reign is kind of surprising and interesting, which is why I was doing this video. So where does Fareed's departure leave OL Reign? Laura Harvey is going to be returning to OL Reign after the Summer Olympics in Tokyo. She had previously managed Seattle Reign from 2013 to 2017. The challenge for Harvey is that this is a team with very talented players. She is being handed a team with so much talent. Will she be able to utilize that talent? How is she going to utilize it and bring out these players? I think one of the biggest things Harvey can do is solidify the lineup and allowing players to be comfortable playing or getting comfortable playing in certain positions. If you were to go back and look at the OL Reign lineups, players are being shifted around a lot. This is fine if some players are comfortable playing in multiple spots or positions or had time to adjust and get comfortable playing in multiple spots and positions. But shifting and moving around players all the time doesn't allow them to get comfortable playing in, you know, certain spots. If you want players to play multiple positions, which is great, by the way, they have to be comfortable in one spot before being, before being moved to the next. At least that's how I see it. I mainly stayed as a defender. I wasn't like um, Margaret Pierce, who can go from defender to forward or forward to defender, but that's just me. <laughs> when it comes to Laura Harvey, she does have a lot of experience coaching Rain FC and has gained more experience as an assistant coach to the U.S. Women's National Team. I do believe that the experience she gained from the U.S. Women's National Team and working alongside Flacco Adonofsky will help in developing Ole Rain. OL Reign and the players. Hopefully when Lauren Harvey does, I mean, hopefully when Laura Harvey does return to OL Reign, we will be able to see the talent that Reign should be known for. Okay, 
I'm gonna end this here. I didn't intend for the video to go on this long. So this Saturday, July 24th, O.L. Rain will be taking on Orlando Pride. So I am an Orlando I am an Orlando Pride fan, but yeah, good luck to both OL Reign and Orlando. Um, tomorrow, July 21st, the U.S. Women's National Team takes on Sweden. If I can get up at 4 in the morning, <laughs> I'll watch and review that game. Maybe I just won't sleep tonight. I don't know. <laughs> that being said, this is all I have for you guys today. Tell Lindsay Horan you appreciate you appreciate her and that she's beautiful. And I'll see you all in the next one. Later.